and the snippet is what it's actually going to paste. So uh, g is the best. And you can switch to rich text if you want to do fancy formatting. Okay. Um, there's this matching. I haven't messed with this. They said that loose requires you to, to be a lot more of a programmer, um, mm. but I don't need that. <laughs> And so then it just automatically adds to the group that I was doing it in. And so then if I type, then it just swaps that in. Wow. I bet that saves you a ton of time. It's, it's nice. And then like the one thing you can't do is overlap your keywords. Oh, okay. But you can always go back and change them. So I could always right click, edit, um, duplicate, and then change. Hmm. So it's, it's streamlined my, my recaption process where all of these are words that it constantly misspells for me. Um, so I've just been able to create a, a quick keyword as I go and then um, it speeds up my process. That's pretty neat. Yeah, and yeah. then like for my emails, right? Instead of having to track down my link for students every time, now I can just type period book me and it pops it in. Yeah, does it do descriptive hyperlinks when you do the rich text part? I don't know. I haven't messed with the rich text. Um, okay. I was just curious. Yeah, it might. Um, and it is open source and they're on, if you're into the programmer stuff, um, they are on GitHub. And so they're constantly, um, I think, revising or potentially able to revise or because it's open source, if you wanted to grab a programmer, they could always modify it for you. Yeah, I think maybe we should announce this in all of the science groups because I think everybody's probably struggling. Yeah, it, um, it definitely made my life a lot better with this with the same thing. Is there anything else I can demonstrate in the little bit of, of it that I know? That's um, no, that's great. No, I think this was enough to kind of give us an idea of, of um, like how much more efficient it is than having to go back through and retype. Yeah, uh, misspelled words and things. So yeah, and especially because you you use them all through it, and so I was initially just right highlight copy and then highlight paste, highlight paste, but then you swap words and you have to go back and retype. So uh, yeah, that I think would take a long time. Yeah. Well, thanks, Stephanie. That was awesome. That was really yeah. cool. Okay, and I, I can actually think of several e-learning offices that would want to tell their faculty about that. So I will be sure to. Um, pass that along. Um, when you joined us, we were just in the middle of a discussion about um, student engagement, like I mentioned, and um, Roshni and Brenda had both shared um, kind of what they were doing to reach out to students. Would you like to share something on the student engagement? Like how are you, how are you keeping track of or identifying students who may not be like submitting assignments, who weren't showing up to Zoom sessions? Well, so I'm doing everything asynchronously in terms okay. of content delivery. So the only time that I'm checking in is if I notice they're missing things. Um, and for my, my 213, I've had almost this entire group. I think I have two new students this quarter that I haven't had previously. Um, the rest I've had either one or two previous quarters already with. Um, and so most of them, they're not, they're not seeking me out but they're also mm -hmm. like, I know they're doing okay because they're keeping up, they're doing well in the work. Um, and then through the, their communications outside of class, um, I'm hearing that they're okay or that my group has asked me to ask this question on their behalf um, from okay. the few that do show up. So and then I, I teach 160 and I'm getting a lot better attendance for my Zoom. I'm calling them review sessions mm -hmm. um, and that's partly because I require participation twice a week and they can okay. get it for coming to the Zoom and or the discussion board. So um, I'm getting participation there, but I'm students that are not responding and I'm not really hearing from them. I've tried a, just a checking in email saying, I noticed you appear to be struggling. Like, do you want to set up a time to meet with me and talk about it? Like, what can I do? and only half of them answered. Um, and one of them only answered when I was like, you have missed two labs, your third lab is late. If you don't turn it in by Monday, I have to fail you. Oh no, <laughs> ah, it's, that's not good. <laughs> syllabus policy, I'm sorry, you need to turn this in like now. Um, and then I got to, oh, okay, I'll do that. And then I, I'm gonna, when I dig myself out of what I've been piled up with, um, I'll be following up with like a, so can we talk about why you haven't been doing these, so. That's good that you're reaching out um, 
to students. One thing um, I've been hearing just from all the different meetings that I've attend because um, I also met with um, an astronomy group yesterday, I met with A&P yesterday, is that um, they felt that students were responding better to office hours that weren't labeled as office hours. Mm -hmm. So calling it a review session or calling it something else um, seemed to get more students to want to come. Um, another suggestion, I think it was Anthony, um, he teaches lots of different things, but he was in the astronomy meeting. He shared that um, he gives them some sort of a little agenda so they know they're not just coming just that they have to ask questions. He gives them an opportunity to bring their questions, but he also says, hey, I'm going to talk about a couple of these other things too, so if you want to come. So it gives it a little bit more structure, and he said he thought that it helped students um, be like less anxious or afraid to, to come and, and participate. And then um, another one I heard this week was um, Yvonne, he was, I think, in the astronomy meeting as well, and um, Yvonne was saying that he noticed that lots of students are not working on their homework until just like hours before it's due, and they're waiting till the very last minute. I, I suspect maybe that's a problem that a lot of faculty are seeing right now, um, and he was trying something, and I can't remember what he called it, um, what the name he gave it was, but he was um, scheduling Zoom times for students to come and work on their assignment with him together. And he was doing some example problems with them. And um, he said that kind of got them working on their assignments a little bit earlier and it cut down on the number of last minute emails he was getting. Um, so I was, I was just really, um, am always impressed by the things that I hear um, faculty say during these meetings, some of the things that they've tried and what they're doing. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's been good. All right, um, looks like we might have lost Brenda. I don't know if she logged out or is coming back. Um, so do you want to continue talking about student engagement or do you want to hit on labs or assessments? Or we could, um, it's 1130, so we have about 30 minutes left. Or um, we can go to the reflection question that we've been asking um, most of the COP groups this week. Whatever um, you all want to want to do is fine. Uh, what's the reflection question? Um, the reflection question is, um, I, I'm not going to phrase it as well as Jen normally does, um, but it's, what have you learned or tried or um, plan to try um, now that you're going to take forward with you into fall? So like what's working in your class or what's something new that you want to try that you're going to if you're going to be online in fall that you're going to, you know, move that forward to that classroom. Or even keep for your face to face classroom if you've learned something that you can apply that way also. Do you want to go Stephanie. Uh, sure. Um, so I think having all of these asynchronous lecture videos will be helpful um, to give them one more resource even if we go, I go back to face-to-face. -to -face. Um, so I think that'll be helpful and something I'll keep. Um, and at that point, I'll probably have to start considering whether I go back and redo any of them since I had put them together so quickly. Um, and shifting the assessment questions that I'm asking towards maybe more open resource questions um, that are more complicated, especially for the uh, 200 series, the major series for us. Um, kind of acknowledging that we live in this era where information is always available, but it's how do you filter it and use it that is important. Yep. Um, and so kind of de-emphasizing the multiple choice. 160 this quarter, I added um, a connections assignment where they have to build concept maps of the three chapter units that we're doing. Um, linking all of the ideas across the different chapters. So not just within one chapter in isolation. And then my goal is at the end, when they're staring at their multiple choice cumulative final, for them to then connect all of the, the chapter, the, the unit ones together and see the whole quarter kind of laid out and how it, it's all important. You can't forget one chapter. Um, it all builds. Um, but then also, adding points to basically making them do something they should be doing anyway for studying. Um, okay. 
And then I might try to also add that into my 200 level class because they could definitely also benefit from that. Are you doing a research project with the 213 class? We, we we have a couple different things going on. So I am teaching half of it and Danny Nahara is teaching the other half. Um, and so, I mean like half of the sections. Um, and so we've got um, like a, normally it would have been their phenology walking the trails on campus project um, where they would track uh, what's blooming when. And so Danny is continuing to go out onto the trails and take pictures and collect the data for them. Um, and then they get the Excel file and have to process it. We figured out how to make them, how to make um, like heat map on a map um, in Excel. Um, so they can see like on campus, where are, are most of these blooms happening? Um, so they're working on that through the whole quarter. And then um, what is called the My Native Plant Project where they've been assigned one species. He's adding, again, he's going out and taking pictures of the same plant through the whole quarter so they can watch one plant develop through spring. Um, mm. and, then, and then they're going to look at their pictures. Um, they're labeling the anatomy of it, but they're also looking at how it's developing. Then we've asked them to also do research into its ecology. So where does it live? What other plants does it live with? Does it have interactions? And then finally, to make them apply the ecology, the ecosystem services. <laughs> help with? Why should we protect this plant? Um, so they're working on that as well this quarter in a group. Wow. Do you have any of these um, assignments added to the appropriate um, I, COP shell? I believe I do. They okay, may be great. labeled in a way that is not the most helpful. Um, okay. I think we're going to have the groups go back and do some relabeling mm -hmm. because lots of people are asking, hey, who put this here? I want to follow up. And we're like, I have no idea. <laughs> so we're, I think we're going to go back and do some identification of that. Yeah. Somebody in one of the, I didn't miss the last meeting, but the meeting before that said, if you go to the file, you see who uploaded it and then you can email them. Yeah, in files, you can see who might have uploaded a, fi uploaded a file, but if it went, um, like was imported in or copied into a module, it's really <coughs> hard to tell who, who oh, did okay. that. I haven't found a way to identify those unless you went to the file manager. So you're right about that, yeah. All right, so um, Roshni, do you want to share um, something that you're planning to take forward into fall? Okay, so I know a lot of people are doing asynchronous lectures. Uh, um, it, that I prefer to meet the students and that's going okay. I do need to find better videos to post for students to support the lectures. Um, and I'm doing that because um, a while back, my students in Bio 116 is posting my Panapto lectures and you can see who's watching them and if they watch the full thing and they just weren't watching them. And so I just asked the class and they just flat out told me they just prefer what I post from YouTube. Oh. So I thought if they prefer that and it's closed caption and I can spend the time just finding the videos. So I'll use that. So I do need to improve my instructions for online um, especially for the students who are not as engaged and are missing the announcements, but improving my instructions is something that I'm always uh, working on. Um, so I'm trying to think, I think the meeting online and letting students know, or maybe having a time, even if we go back to campus, that I can host an office hour um, online by request. Um, if I'm not just going to host an office hour because I did that one quarter and nobody was turning up, but if you do it by request, mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be better because one person says they're coming and then other people say they're going to join. So uh, next week for my bio 160, um, some of the students wanted to do an online extra 
session where we just met to discuss assignments for genetics that were due that day. And so I just created it. So I'll know next week how it goes. But um, yeah, the students, the students for the most part have been doing, you know, pretty good, I think. Uh, you always do worry about the ones who are not as engaged. Yeah, um, we've had a lot of um, discussions throughout all of the groups about student engagement. Um, are either of you using the message students who feature in the gradebook to yes. kind of find those students? Because uh, that is just so efficient. I use that one in my class. I have, but not so far this quarter because I'm having Leon something, but it's the why they did badly because some of them are, are already, you know, sending me an email being like, I did really badly. My daughter was running a fever and I just really couldn't. Mm -hmm. And so then I don't feel the need to include them in that message um, or like the five students who got a zero on their free response on their last test because two of them copied internet sources into their answers and three of them submitted a page file instead of the PDF file so I couldn't open it. Oh so yeah. I had to separate right? not all of them yeah. get the same email. Yeah I do We're, sort out some yeah. of the students that I know have contacted me. I've actually had so many more students um, well my students are faculty uh, but I've actually had so many more faculty going through the training class that I actually had to start keeping a hard copy list where I just could write quick notes so I don't always have to go to my computer to look things up because I was having a hard time remembering everybody's um, names and everything and what they needed to turn in or what they had told me. So that's something new that I've started doing because my class size is so huge. Um, is I, my class runs every three weeks and I typically, my cap is like 30, I think, but I typically only have like 15 to 20 and now I'm at 80. So I'm, it's like oh. <laughs> quadrupled my oh. number of students um, to get through training in, in three weeks. So I've been struggling to keep up with that. So I feel you on, um, you know, trying to get messaging out to people and identify who's told you what. Um, I, I do use that tool though, the message students who feature, cause it really, really helps me a lot. All right. Um, what would you like to chat about next? We can um, keep talking if you have um, like something that you need to exchange resources or get ideas on. Uh, we haven't hit on labs or exams yet. Um, so we could go with one of those or um, if you wanna end early because you need a few minutes back in your day, uh, we could do that. Self-care came up in one of the groups. I think it was the AMP group yesterday was asking, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Because teaching online from home, you feel like you're on 24 seven. Um, so I could share a little bit about what some of the other groups um, we're talking about there and if you have are you doing something for self-care like how are you keeping yourself you know sane and rested and happy is that an option <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know i ordered a puzzle it hasn't arrived as yet <laughs> yay i love puzzles <laughs> I got um, a new puppy. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I would love to do that. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. What kind of puppy did you get, Stephanie? Um, so it's a funny story. We're her rehome. So my brothers have a friend uh, who got her from a breeder. So according to him, she's half border collie, half Australian shepherd. Okay. She looks like a little border collie. She's the black and white. Okay. Um, and roommate was allergic. And my brothers oh. were like, we know our sister was looking at puppies. <laughs> so, well, um, at least it, she got a good new home. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that it's a friend of it, you know, he knows where she went. Um, That's good. Yeah. And my, we keep him updated. That's um, good. But I don't feel like I'm getting enough um, self care in, but I'm also in the tenure process. And so my committee is asking me to do more more to reach my students, more to engage them. Why don't you set up a Google voice number? <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm, I'm Zoomed out personally. Um, I mean, I love talking to people in Zoom and whatever, but when you do it like six hours a day, and I'm sure you all know where I'm you know, coming from on this, yes. um, it gets hard. And I, I normally work from home anyways, my entire job's from home. Um, mm -hmm. 
so it wasn't a huge change for me, but the biggest change I've had is now everybody else is online. So I do have a lot more um, going on in Zoom than I, than I normally do. Like for instance, when we're done with this, I'm going straight to an open lab session where I just ask me anything kind of lab mm -hmm. session that I just am doing for all of the teachers in our system and whoever shows up. It's, oh, yeah. it's kind of an impromptu, sure <laughs> it's kind of an impromptu COP meeting for to, to get help with. <laughs> Um, canvas and, and different things. So um, yeah, I, I feel you on the self-care part. It's hard not to answer your emails one more time, but I swear answering an email one more time takes like another hour because you find 10 other things you need to do. So um, yeah. I don't know. Oh, uh -oh. I, I was looking at your email and I made everything way too small. <laughs> Um, yeah, so with the canvas, uh, since you're the canvas experts, I'm sure there are a lot of things in canvas that canvas can do that I am not familiar with. Yeah. Where would I go? Uh, because going through that long list of things when you go into canvas help, uh, I don't know, sometimes it just takes me too long to find the help that I want. So what are the tricks and tips you have for learning Canvas? Um, I guess my biggest tip for learning Canvas would be not to be afraid to click a button and just see what it does. Um, so I would say just click around if you're comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. um, the other tip for learning Canvas is, um, as Stephanie was mentioning earlier, finding information is a skill. Um, you know, we're in an information age and, you know, trying to find that is half the challenge usually to solve a problem. So um, the canvas guides, if you're familiar with those, yeah. are really great. There's a, there's a specific um, portion of the guides that's just videos. So if you don't like to read, Instructure maintains a, a video guide. They have like about five minute videos on certain topics. So I guess it really just depends on what you're looking for. Um, but the Canvas guides are usually how I go about learning. Like if somebody asks me a question about something in Canvas that I don't know how to do, and that still happens even though I'm the Canvas trainer for the system, um, Canvas has so much stuff in it, it's just so impossible to know every single tool. So when a student asks me a question that I can't answer, I will go and look it up in the guides. Uh, I love how the guides are um, divided up by student guides versus instructor guides. They have one, guides, one set of guides for using um, the Canvas community. So I usually go to the guides pages first. Right, I just uh, find I'm not efficient at searching those pages sometimes. I don't have a good example for me. Yeah, okay, so tips for searching. Um, use, try to use, if you know what the tool is called or what Canvas calls it, use their language. Because if, you're, if you go into the Canvas guides and look for email, as an example, you're not gonna find anything on email. Well, you might find like an Outlook plugin or something for something, um, but the Canvas messaging is inbox, Canvas conversations, or messaging. If you look it up under one of those words, um, you're going to find something more than you would if you look up the word email. Um, my one quick tip for searching is um, when you land, like say if you go to the instructor guides and you know like that you want to look for, um, I don't know, let's say you want to record a video. So you could choose the word record or you could choose the word video. And um, if you use control F on that page and then just do a keyword search, your computer will take you to wherever in those guides pages that the word video or the word record appears. And then you can just kind of um, navigate through those until you find the one that you want. So that's an easy way to filter the information. Uh, and then they also have at the top of the guides, there's like a linked table of contents. So if you know you want to read about quizzes, if you just click on the one that says quizzes, it will take you down and show you all of the instructor guides for quizzes. Um, gosh, other than that, I mean, using Canvas as resources, I think, um, is the easiest way to get to a how-to sheet if you don't have somebody to ask a question for um, or a question to. And then I'm doing the, the open labs on Fridays. 
uh, and the timing, depending on when the, the community of practice meetings are scheduled, um, kind of bounce between 11 and noon, depending this week it's at noon. So if you have a tool that you want to investigate a little bit, if you want to come there, we can do it together and we can screen share and talk about it. And um, sometimes you'll get other people that are there also that either want to learn about it or have used it and we share information that way also. So I don't know okay. if any of those would work for you. Okay. Yeah. Is there a no. particular tool you're looking for to know more about? Oh, no, I don't have something off the top of my head right now, but I'm very aware. Oh, wait, Stephanie does. So let's yeah. go with what Stephanie. Yeah, let's see what Stephanie says. Well, so for my multiple choice questions, um, I know Canvas has two quiz tools now. It yes. has the classic mm -hmm. and the new. And I know in the classic that I can create, I think they call them question pools, where it will pull X number out of this mm -hmm. set. Can I do something similar in the Nuke quiz tool? Um, I think so. Um, my guess would be they've probably done that, but I'm not using new quizzes yet. So this would be an instance where I would go take myself to the Canvas guides. I have watched tried the video. You've looked new quizzes and, find it. Okay. and question pool, and I'm not finding it. And I don't know okay. if I'm just getting caught in other. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, um, let me look that up for you, uh, Stephanie. Thank you. Um, I don't know if we're, I mean, we can go kind of try to find it today, but since I don't have new quizzes turned on, I need to go mm -hmm. into a practice course, activate it, and yeah. then do some testing with it. It just has um, some handy things, like you can, when they type in their answers, if you're doing fill in the blank, you don't, it doesn't have to exactly match. You can set it to okay. have some wiggle room. And so this okay. new tool has some cool features, but I can't use them. <laughs> Um, actually, you can do misspelled words and things in um, the classic it, tool too. I think I think is you it just close put a, enough or something like that. Um, in well, in classic, I don't know that it's defined, but I I distinctly remember being able to put in multiple things. You just put a comma between it, and yeah. you can like if you know that there's like a common misspelling or some an alternate answer that you would accept. I'm pretty sure you can put yeah. that into classic as well. Um, I, I know how to add multiple corrects. Okay, yeah, but I can't figure out the like. My students drop weird letters. I don't get consistent misspellings. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so um, I will um, do a little bit of research on that, Stephanie. And that would um, be great. Do we have? We must have your email somewhere. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I'm in three or four of these. Can yeah, I was to say if I don't catch you by email, I'm sure I'll run into you um, in another meeting. But yeah, you're right. New quizzes is coming. I don't have a date on when that's getting turned on for us yet. We I already. Know it's a, we already have it. At yeah, Denver. some campuses have turned it on, um, but it still has a few bugs. Yeah. So not everybody's using it. There are some good things about it, and then there are some things that are a little glitchy that Canvas is still um, working on. Um, there's also a new content editor coming. It was supposed to be released, um, I think, in June or July of this year, but they're putting a hold on that. Um, so I haven't added that to the training class yet, but I have looked at the new content editor. Um, and if you want to look at it and just give it a try, it's in your course settings under the um, features or apps where you can, as a teacher, tell Canvas what you want turned on in your own classroom. Mm -hmm. So um, you can go in and turn that on and see what the difference is between the old content editor and the new content editor. Where, They've reorganized a few. Where would you find that? I'm looking at one of my classes right now. Okay. Um, how about I just screen share and show you? That'd be okay. easy, huh? Sounds good. Okay, let me. And I don't see the option for new quizzes. Just does, does that mean that it's just not turned on at Bellevue College? Um, it's possible. Um, let me go see where it is in my class. It's in your course settings. And let me just log into Canvas here real quick. Oops, come on. Oh, there we go. I have my laptop sitting um, up on my desk and I have my keyboard tray too. I was typing on the wrong keyboard. <laughs> I do that quite frequently. Yeah, my husband is running two computers at the same time. Two mice, two keyboards, four monitors. It's kind of confusing. <laughs> I keep typing in the wrong place. Let me just grab my demo classroom real quick. And we'll go look. I assume you can see my screen, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and then um, let me just bump this up one because I'm on my laptop top and I think it's a little bit small. Okay, so go into course settings and under this tab that says feature options. Um, actually, let me turn on my annotation tool so you can see my cursor better. Okay, can you see the little red dot now? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so under this tab that says feature options, um, if you go here, you have a whole host of things you can choose to turn on. And new quizzes is right here for me. Uh -huh. And um, RCE is the rich content editor. Enhancements, you just turn that on here. And then you can look and see if there's anything else in your class that you want to have turned on. I usually turn on my learning mastery gradebook because um, I like that one. Um, but yeah, you can just turn that on here and then um, it doesn't have a place to save it, but I'll just update it there just to make sure that it updates everything. And then let's um, just open up a page real quick. And if you don't have those feature options in your um, course settings under the, the feature options tab, um, contact your e-learning office and ask them um, if they've added those yet because sometimes they do have to be added at a higher account level, like the main account level, um, and then they let the teachers decide if they want to turn them on or off in their classroom. So let's just grab a page here and let's open the editor. And let's see if our new content editor is in here. Okay, so this is what the new content editor looks like here. And let me get rid of my side stuff there so maybe we can see this a little better. Uh, okay, so everything's just a little bit reorganized. There are a lot more drop down menus now. So the little carrots um, are the drop down menus. Uh, it's, it's not that much different. But so it's it, moved the sidebar of like linking to files and things into the menu. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is, um, the, the sidebar is going to go away. You're right. I forgot about that. So there's some different things in here. I haven't investigated everything. I've, I've looked at it a couple times, but um, I don't know. I kind of thought it was a lot of extra clicking, but I do like that it's streamlined. So, I mean, it's, you know, you just got to get used to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to uh, redo the training materials in the class. So I, I am, I've been watching when they think that they're going to turn this on for everyone because I want to make sure that I'm giving everyone, you know, a couple months ahead of time to, to kind of train on it and see. But I didn't feel like I should be training on it right now because um, it was just like, too much for people to know that there was going to be another editor coming right now. Um, but some of the colleges may have already turned turned this on. Uh, yeah. Let's go look at quizzes. Maybe we can. Um, oops. Well, it's not something super urgent. So, okay. Because I can make do with the classic quizzes until I okay. figure this out. All right. So. Okay, well, we won't, we won't bother to look at that right yeah. now then, but I will do some investigation, Stephanie, and see if I can... Um, if there's an answer, just send me a link. I will yeah, be happy. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll see what I can find for you. Yeah. Um, okay, we're about four minutes to noon. Is there anything else you want to chat about or you want to end a few minutes early? I'm happy to end. I know you've got something okay. at noon. Yeah, I do have something I'm going to um, run to here in, in just a minute. So um, thank you for joining us today. And I didn't remember to start the recording until about halfway through your beef text demo. So I thought, oh, we should be recording this. And I thought, oh, I should definitely have been recording this. So um, we will post um, yeah. the link to this in, in the classroom area, the resource area. And, well, and just, I know Lucas talked about having used it in grad school, so he probably knows way more than I do. Maybe. Yeah, but maybe we can get together a demo and have um, somebody do this again in another mm -hmm. meeting, because I think that that would be a tool that would be useful to and, a, lo a lot of people. And there are some others that I looked at that were also like free and open source. This is just the one that I picked. So. Okay. Well, and cool. then there's even paid ones. One of my chemistry colleagues is paying $3 a month for one. Oh, well, that's not too bad, $3 a month. Right. It's when you start paying for 
10 or 15 or 20 different $3 a month things that, that can yeah. get you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Well, thank you both. I'm going to go ahead and end our recording. And uh, I don't know when the next meeting is scheduled, but it, we're on biweekly. So it'll be about two weeks before this group meets again. So thanks for joining us. And um, Roshni, if you want to come um, with any Canvas questions to the Ask Alyssa Open Labs, well, you too, Stephanie. Um, but um, since Roshni specifically asked about it, if you have a tool you want help investigating, you just let me know, okay? Okay, I will do that. Yes, All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks thank so you. much. Bye. Have a great Bye. holiday weekend. Enjoy your extra day off. <laughs> right? <laughs> sort of, yeah. No teaching. I have a student who already scheduled a meeting on Monday. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh no.